Alrighty, fifth graders. So today we are going to be looking at lesson 14. Um, in lesson 14, we are looking at kind of the same thing that we did yesterday in 13. But yesterday in 13, we multiplied by whole numbers. Um, today we're going to be multiplying by fractions. So let's start with part A. Since that one's done for us, we'll use this to kind of talk about it a little bit. So, oops, didn't mean to do that. So in A, we're converting from days to weeks. And it's telling us 28 days. So we need to figure out how many weeks 28 days is. So we can think of this as of 28 days being 28 times one day. So our 28 is going to come down and we need to figure out a way to say how much of a week one day is. So we can think of this with a model. I'm going to separate out seven spaces, right? Because there's seven days in a week. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and that last one makes seven. So one day is going to be one square. So that one piece is one day. Now, if we look at this uh, model and think of it as a fraction, this model is going to equal one seventh. So 28 times one day can also be read as 28 times one seventh weeks. And then we're going to multiply. So when we multiply this, one of the ways we can think about it is 28 over one right, because all of our whole numbers are a number over 1 times 1 over 7, which would also be 28 over 7. And so we multiply those together to get 28 over 7. We bring our week down, and then we can simplify, right. So if we divide 28 divided by 7, we get 4 weeks. Okay, so 28 days is equal to four weeks. Let's take a look at B. So B we are doing quarts to gallons. So we're looking at quarts to gallons for this one. So we can, we're looking at 20 quarts. So we can think of 20 quarts as 20 times one quart. Since we're going from quarts to gallons, we need to figure out how much of a gallon one quart is. Well, one gallon is equal to four quarts. So I'm going to draw my model again, but this time I'm only going to have four spaces. So that is that I can say is one gallon. So to fill in or to show one quart, I'm only going to shade in one section, which would equal one fourth. So 20 times one quart, we can think of as being 20 times one fourth gallons. And then we can multiply. So we can think of this as 20 over one times one over four. When we multiply this, we can also think of it as 20 times 1 over 1 times 4, which will give us 20 over 4, or 20 fourths. So if we were to shade in 20 fourths, or we were to model 20 fourths, we would have a total of 5 gallons. Right? 4 times 5 gives us 20, so 20 divided by 4 gives us 5. Let's take a look at C. So for C, since we're looking at centimeters to meters, and we know that this is going to be in kind of powers of 10, this time we're going to use decimals. So we're looking at 920 centimeters, and we need to convert that to meters. So we can think of 920 centimeters as being 920 times 1 centimeter. Well, if we think back to yesterday, we know that one meter 
is equal to 100 centimeters. So if we kind of flip that in reverse, one centimeter is going to be equal to one hundredth meters. All right, so we're just kind of flipping it around. So we can think of this as 920 times one hundredth meters. So we can multiply using a standard algorithm, we can multiply using a uh, an area, the area model, or we can use our place value chart. So if we think of our place value chart, and I'll draw kind of a mini one down at the bottom for us, we have hundreds, tens, ones, decimal point, tenths. We have 920. If we're multiplying by 100, we're going to be moving to the right two places. One, two. Our decimal point comes down and we add our two. We can put our zero at the end, but we don't need to. So that tells us that 920 centimeters is equal to nine and two hundredths meters. Next, we're going to look at meters to kilometers. All right, yesterday we talked about grams and kilograms. Um, so that conversion is going to be the same as meters to kilometers. All righty. So we can think of this as being 1,578 meters or 1,578 times one meter. This has already done the conversion part for us. So this is telling us that one meter is equal to one thousandth, sorry, oops, I put too many zeros, one thousandth kilometers. So we can do the same thing that we did with the previous question. We can move our numbers around across our place value chart. We can think of this as being 1,578 times one thousandth kilometers. So our kilometers is going to come straight down, right? We have to have our label there. And then when we move our number across our place value chart, we have one and five hundred seventy-eight thousandths kilometers. Alrighty. So we're just moving our decimal points around a little bit. So let's take a look at E. So E, we are going from grams to kilograms. So just like how meters to, when we did meters to kilometers, one gram is going to be equal to one thousandth kilograms. Okay, so it's that same conversion factor. So 60,080 grams, we can think of as being 60,080 times one gram. which we can also, since we need to get to kilograms, we can think of as 6,080 times 1 thousandths kilograms. When we multiply that out, we get 6 and 8 hundredths kilograms. Or you can say oops, 6 and 8 80 thousandths kilograms. They are, they're the same. It's the same number. Just one has the zero and one doesn't. But they are equivalent. And our last number, or our last set of numbers, we are going to be looking at milliliters to liters. So we have 509 milliliters, which we can think of as 509 times one milliliter, which is going to equal 509 times something liters. So one milliliter is going to be equal to 1,000 liters. Okay, so we're using that same conversion factor again. And 
we multiply. We can move across our place value chart, we can just move our decimal point, we can multiply however we want to get there. But we will end up with 509 thousandths liters. Alrighty. So if you'd like to do the second question, so 2, B, C, D, E, and F for some extra practice, you can, but you do not have to. Um, we're just going to focus on this first page. The second page is kind of right, is just kind of the same thing. You're writing out the equations. But let's take a look at your independent practice really quick. So for your independent practice, you're doing some similar kind of stuff. Um, so let's take a look at, um, at all of these. Give me one second. There we go. Sorry about that. My screen was freezing or was doing some freezy stuff on my end. So let's take a look at your independent practice for today. So it's, it's pretty much the same as what we were doing before. The only difference is it's asking you to write out like a sentence at the end. Um, so I'm going to highlight that for you. So for example, for A, it says the screen measures 36 inches, convert 36 inches to feet. And then at the very end, it has you write the screen measures 36 inches or three feet. So I want you to try to write out a statement for your answer. Um, it's okay if you can't get, this, get that statement out, but I want you to give that a try for at least a couple of them. And just like yesterday, I'm going to give you the conversion factors for each of these, but there is a conversion chart on Canvas as well. So for B, it's talking about a jug of juice holding eight cups and converting cups to pints. So one cup is equal to five tenths pints, or if you prefer fractions, one cup is equal to one half pints. C is um, centimeters to meters. So like we talked about a couple of minutes ago, one centimeter is one hundredth meters. D is looking at milliliters to liters. Again, we just talked about those a minute ago. So that is one milliliter is equal to one thousandth liter. And E is grams to kilograms. So one gram is equal to one thousandth, oops, sorry, I keep putting an extra zero there, one thousandth kilograms. And F is meters to kilometers, so that's one meter is equal to one thousandth kilometer. Alrighty, so those are all of your conversion factors if you need them. Very quickly, I do have a secret word for you. Oops. I do have a secret word for you today, and that secret word today is autumn. Alrighty, so please make sure you write that word down somewhere on your paper. If you run into any questions, uh, please let us know. As a reminder, I am out of the office today, um, but if you need any extra help, you can reach out to Miss Sally, or you can reach out to me and I'll get back to you on Friday. Alrighty, I hope you have a fantastic day and a great weekend. Adios, everybody.